Hello everyone who loves the scientific process but is also very, very tired. I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths. Let's build where we're continuing with our plasma helicopter. And there's good news and bad news. The good news is, is that I like how this is going. I'm looking at this thing moving around and flying and doing plasma and stuff like that. That's the verb, right? Doing plasma. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with it so far. The bad news is, is that this is one of those uh, projects which uh, is actually might take a while and might require uh, more than two uh, videos to cover completely. Because yeah, that's how that's the thing with From the Depths. You have an idea, you act on it, and then uh, then it turns out, oh yeah, the the easy bit, or at least the fast bit, is building the thing. But then the thing that really takes a lot of time is testing it and refining it and adding all the little things hither and thither just to make sure that the thing is working the way it is supposed to. And that takes bloody ages or so it feels like. So it, it is always worth bearing in mind that uh, whenever you build something in front of the depths, technically it's never really finished. You can always make it better and you can always change it. And... Yes, yeah, it's not even make it better, it's just change it uh, so it's different. That's always an option too. And just to catch up with what's happening on screen, I'm testing out uh, what kind of propulsion we want for this. I, uh, what, custom jets do seem to be the way to go because they're just, like, good. Um, I was thinking about using uh, just the regular, like, boring not jets. Not jets? No, they are jets. And... But nah, that like, that wouldn't do the trick. There wouldn't be enough thrust, and we want lots of thrust. Also, uh, more than one person uh, was pointing out last time that it is possible to, like, extend uh, the visual appearance of these uh, propeller blades, um, if nothing else. And um, I could not find that option. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just thick and I wasn't seeing it. Uh... But also, just like, it just was not doing uh, what a, what a, I don't know, it just didn't seem uh, right. So, yeah, like, uh, we we're going with, a, hopefully, a slightly better uh, form of uh, decoration, uh, just on the ends of these blades. Um, because you do want to make the helicopter look like, you know, you want to make the blades look long enough so that they can actually, so it looks believable. Um, for a helicopter, because remember, this is a faction craft, Glacave Dominion's probably gonna have this. Somebody did point out that, hey, like, it could have, like, you know, little, uh, medevac drones or something like that. Medevac was not the words, uh, word they used, but yeah, but no, I think this is, this is more a Glacave design, uh, I think. And also, I appreciate everybody describing this thing, uh, as looking like a whale. It's, it d definitely has a... A whale vibe to it. It's like, I'm not sure what kind of whale it would be. Like, nothing grandiose like an orca or anything like that, but um, yeah, what's a kind of whale that circles? Like, let's let's brainstorm uh, the name of this thing uh, while we're just uh, while we're just uh, watching past me fiddle around with the settings of the rotors. Yeah, so like, there's a lot of fiddling with like propeller blades and all that stuff uh, here. So let's just go here. Circling whale. What does it? Why do whales circle? Bubble net. I mean, I guess this could be called the humpback, because I mean, yeah, it literally has a hump on its back. Like I do. Like, later in the video, I'm not sure exactly when, I do do, uh, I put a lot of extra blocks, like, around, uh, the rotor and around the, um, custom jets. And so, yeah, I think, I'm really starting to like that term, the humpback, because humpbacks do circle, so... In case you didn't know about what humpback whales do, uh, humpback whales release bubbles in precise circular nets or amorphous clouds. These bubbles call schooling fish to clump together for easy capture by feeding whales. So it's quite cool, actually. They they use they effectively make a net out of bubbles. Except that instead of blowing bubbles, this thing. Oh, I should change the. Uh, I should change the uh, the color of the plasma to be like blue, to be like you know bubbles. And I should also, like, uh, 
What else should I do? It's like I should like name the AI Bubbles or something like that. That would be quite fun. Uh, Captain Bubbles. I'm also thinking about making the plasma because it is a it's a destabilized plasma gun. Uh, I've been maybe I'm thinking I could turn that into a Seawiz as well. Um, I'm not entirely sold on that idea simply because uh, in my testing, uh, which you will see later in the video, missiles tend to approach this uh, mostly from behind, above, or below, rather than from the side, because this thing bounces up and down like a crazy person. Like a crazy whale! All the plastic flushed into the oceans, it's, uh, it's made the, the whales go cuckoo crazy! And that's why they are now flying, and why they've turned into helicopters. Actually, it is quite nice that no one described this thing as looking like a canoe, which is, like... Yay! We are making progress in our mental health. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like, I guess that's a fun uh, thing I could do, is just try and make whales all the time. Yeah. Man. This game is fun. Sometimes, like, when playing From the Depths, and, like, you know, when you've gotten fed up once too many times with, uh, the projects, as I call them, um, it's easy to forget uh, that um, this game is fun, and you should have fun with it. And yeah, so here's the little uh, radar mast type thing. I was wondering where to put the radar, and then I thought to myself, hang on, dude, you know where the radar goes on a helicopter? It goes on top, like it's supposed to. And of course, we're just going to make a big radar dome, which I'm aware this is not what the radar on a helicopter actually looks like. It looked I forget how it looks like. Actually, I could look, I could look that up. Really, I could change this to be more like what you'd see on a on an Apache. I did not click that. Google, don't lie to me. Uh, helicopter radar. That's. I mean, it's just it's basically just a big blob. Like if you uh, the. Um, what am I looking at? So, the Apache Longbow, uh, I think, has the probably like the most distinctive radar because it just looks like a, it looks like a big ass blob just sitting on top of the rotor. Oh, the rotor? The ra the rotor. If you if you take rotor and plus radar, you get rodar, which sounds like you know a villain from a, ch a children's cartoon. I am rodar. Bow before me. And this is the point where, by the way, I want this thing to be able to reverse. Uh, it generally doesn't do that, but you know what? We're really leaning into the whole functional helicopter thing. I don't want this thing just to look like one. I want it to kind of function like one as well, uh, without getting like really tricksy uh, with uh, the rotors and stuff like that. And you'll see it flies forwards, it flies backwards. And I'm probably going to uh, turn off... Uh, like all the, what do you call it, all the, all the particle effects from propulsion. Um, you see, I kind of do that here, and like, this is a big mistake, what I'm doing right now. Uh, you must save the deco work, I said this last time, you must save that for last, so that uh, you don't get confused. And also, this is very silly, what I'm doing here, like, oh jeez, oh jeez, like, I think like, if nothing else, we could you could argue that this is, at the very least, we're getting a sense for how this thing will finally look. Uh, because that helps to keep you motivated uh, as you go through it. And yeah, so this is where the strafing thrusters uh, come into it. And like, lo and behold, the center of mass lines up exactly with the breadboard. Uh, that's probably not a, not a bad thing at all. So yeah, like, I'm liking this. I think it looks uh, pretty helicopter-y. Um, uh, who was it? Somebody else suggested that, like, it should have twin rotors, uh, like a Chinook. And, um, yeah, I can see that. Like, it's quite a long, it's quite a long chopper. Uh, but yeah, it's like, I don't know, I quite like this single rotor. I don't know, I just kind of do. I like big helicopters with single rotors. Don't ask me why, it's purely aesthetic. Um, I know the largest helicopter... In the, hold on, largest helicopter in the world. Um, hold on, the largest helicopter. Oh wait, no. Okay, so the current um, largest helicopter is the Mil uh, Mi-26. So that's the Russian-made 
heavy transport helicopter, and that has a single rotor. It does have... What is it? It looks like six uh, blades on that rotor, and just... Just by the way that you can see, just in still photographs of it, you can see just how the rotors droop and just how long they are and how massive the thing is. Like, the Russians just like making big things occasionally. They're like, Comrade, we will make the world's biggest helicopter. Uh, why are we doing- why are we doing that, Comrade? No question! We make big helicopter. To make capitalists envious. Anyway, so, um, I'm a capitalist. That's- that's a joke that is, like, decades out of date. Um... So, yeah, this is, like, alright, so, ah, damn it, I don't remember who suggested this, but they are wonderful. Um... Somebody suggested that instead of changing the thrust uh, of the main rotor to control uh, the altitude, we could instead uh, change the power uh, of it. So what that means is is that like uh, to go up the thing gets a power boost and uh, to go down the thing goes differently. So that has actually worked. And later on, I try that with the tail rotor, but, um... Right, so propulsion, the variable, all that stuff. So now you can see there it's doing what it's supposed to, uh, which is the rotor is, like, spinning at a constant rate, but it's still, like, flying up and down, which makes it way more helicoptery, which is very, very nice. That's what we like to see. We like to see helicopter stuff. So now... Um, after making the tail a little bit tidier, since I'm here doing that. Um, like, I try and do the same thing with the tail rotor for yaw, so it, like, uh, just constantly spins. And that, for some reason, that doesn't work. Maybe there's something I did wrong. Um, but yeah, it's just, like, it's just did not work. It just did not work at all. It just, uh, it only spun, it only spun occasionally, so... Yeah, so this is just me mucking about a little bit. I want to read more about uh, the uh, Mi-26, because that's... That, this, uh, that's fun. Alright, so... To be clear, it's not the largest helicopter ever built. I forget what... Uh, there's another one. That, and again, it's the Russians who did it, because, the, the, because not to be rude, but the Russians are the ones who waste their time on stuff like that. Actually, never mind. Everybody wastes their time on that. And this is the first combat test, just to see how we do. And the plasma gun goes brrrr, and that's very fun. And then I noticed the APS is not firing. You know why the APS is not firing? Uh, because I didn't put any bullets in it, and that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? So, yeah, that's, uh... Yeah, so this is, like... This is good. I like uh, where this is going, it's just... I don't know, it's not tremendously... I don't think this is tremendously fancy. So this is the point where I have to go back and, like, try and remember what the hell shells I actually designed for that gun. Which is embarrassing because I think I misplaced uh, the blueprint uh, where uh, I did that. So you see, there's a little bit of strafing. Thank goodness for hover movement. And there we go. Alright, so... While we futz around with the APS, let's read about the uh, Mi-26 a little bit. So... Alright, following the incomplete development of the heavier Mil uh, Mi-12, also known as the Mil V-12. Hold on, I want to read that. Let's see what happened here. Oh! This is what I was talking about. The Mil V-12, uh, the NATO reported name being Homer. <laughs> it's big and fat, of course it's called Homer. Homer Simpson. Uh, given the project number... Is Delia 65, item 65, is a prototype helicopter designed in the Soviet Union and the largest helicopter ever built. The design Mi-12 would have been the designation for the production helicopter and did not apply to V-12 prototypes. Alright, so this is the a thing that kind of just looks like... It looks like someone chopped the wings off like a Boeing uh, jetliner and then just kind of super glued struts uh, with giant helicopter br blades onto the sides. So that's what I was thinking of before. That is literally the largest helicopter ever built. The largest production helicopter is um, is the Mi-26. Uh, so this is the thing that like uh, followed uh, the uh, the V-12. 
This is basically like, all right, so Komura, that didn't work. Uh, let's try something that's actually somewhat practical. Um, designed to replace earlier uh, MI6 and MI12 heavy lift helicopters and act as a heavy lift helicopter for military and civil use. Having twice the cabin space and payload of the MI6, then the world's largest and fastest production helicopter. Okay, the primary purpose of the Mi-26 was to transport military equipment such as 13-ton amphibious armored personnel characters, characters? Carriers! And mobile ballistic missiles to remote locations after delivery by military transport aircraft such as the Antonov An-22 or Ilyushin Il-76. So I think the Antonov An-22 is like the biggest aircraft ever built. And the Russians blew that up because it was in... Uh, nope, never mind. Uh, nope, it's not the biggest one. Uh, the largest aircraft ever, or at least one of the ones, uh, got destroyed in Ukraine fairly recently by, ironically, uh, the Russians. So that's embarrassing. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. The MI-26 was the first factory-equipped helicopter with a single eight-blade main lift rotor. It is capable of flight in... Oh, uh, just not to interrupt myself, this is the point where I remember... Oh, dang it. Uh, part of the reason the APS uh, isn't firing so well is because um, it's just kind of got a problem here. Like, it's like too low on the underside of the aircraft. So we're just going to essentially give it a little bit of a barbette. Just a smidge. Yay, that looks good. That looks good, and give it a little thing there, which means it's less helicopter uh, gun and more uh, naval gun duct tape onto a helicopter, which now I think about it, is just about the most Russian thing I can think of. It's like, we need heavy firepower for our helicopter. Take this naval gun, stick it on helicopter. And then after multiple failed attempts, they just quietly give up because that's what they do every single time. They try and mount a massive gun uh, onto an aircraft that can't actually handle it. So there's the gun going brrrr. And just a reminder, that gun is a SeaWiz uh, as well. It's just to, uh, shoot down or slow down, uh, missiles that, uh, get a little bit too close. Wee, this is fun. I like this. Man. I am actually pretty pleased with how this helicopter is going. Every so often you try something new and it just, it flows. I can't think of a better uh, way to describe it than that. Is this a super meta craft though? No, not really. Um, I don't think so. It still needs a bunch of stuff. It needs shields, it needs smoke, it needs all kind of stuff. I am trying to take care to think about EMP proofing though, so... Yeah, that is, um, oh yeah, pass border-wise, uh, forgetting about mirror mode, uh, he does that sometimes, it's embarrassing. Uh, alright, technical information. <laughs> Whoa! Alright, so, um, uh, the tail rotor of the MI-26 has about the same diameter of thrust as the four-bladed main rotor fitted to the MD helicopter's MD-500. What is the MD-500? Oh! Whoa! Alright, so that, to be fair, that's a little small helicopter. The MD-500 series is an American family of light utility civilian and military helicopters. The MD-500 was developed from the Hughes 500, a civilian version of the US Army's OH-6A Chaos or Loach. Alright, so it's a little civilian helicopter. So basically, uh, the MI-26 has the main rotors of a civilian helicopter uh, strapped to its butt just to counteract uh, the torque generated by the main rotor. So that's That's hilarious. Speaking of the tail rotor, um, I was reading about uh, stuff on Wikipedia, so I uh, I don't remember if we've tried futzing with the tail rotor yet. I think that might happen next What are you doing past border wise? I know not what you're doing. Yep. I think this is the ill-fated uh, Okay, no, so we're doing that. Yeah, so we're flying a little bit higher. I do actually like... I could add a lot more roll control to this, but I kind of don't want to. Um, because I kind of like how it, like, tilts and maneuvers. It makes it feel more... Alive is the wrong word, but more... More like it's uh, resisting... Um, 
the forces of air and gravity on it, which I think is uh, pretty neat. So yeah, me likey. Me likey a lot. Alright, so I'm probably going to deco that later. Um, I actually did deco it now. Damn it. Also, uh, thanks to the person who pointed out that um, it makes mathematically more sense to have as many 4 meter slopes as possible, never mind if you have to use other things as well. Okay. We I just like watching this thing fly, man. Like I do like helicopters. I like them a lot. Okay, what da 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 Okay. <laughs> hmm Operational history. Or are we done? Uh-huh. Okay, let's... Uh, no, let's talk about... Let's talk about... Uh, let's talk about this ill-fated thing. So, I tried to do the same thing uh, with the... The tail rotor that... Um, I did with the... Uh, right, so we get, uh, like, a null value in there, and I'm not sure what's causing that. So... Yeah, not sure what's causing that at all. So, the problem is, is that it actually works just fine for your, except I set that up backwards for some reason. Uh, you'll see that, this thing just reverses and just does everything wrong. And, um, yeah, but the problem is, is that the thing doesn't spin, just, it doesn't keep spinning uh, the way the tail rotor on a helicopter usually would. So, that is a problem. And it's just me going with that. And I haven't, like... I haven't even stuck torpedoes on this yet. Shocking! And this is just me putting a little bit of extra detection on there, uh, which is not the great place. I'm not sure, like, I think all the detection equipment uh, on a real-life helicopter is like, it's in the mast, so to speak. Not the mast, what's it? Like, the radar goes atop uh, the, uh, the rotor, and then there's kind of things, it's stuck in the nose, generally. That's generally where aircraft uh, radars and cameras and stuff is it's in the nose but that'll do that'll do nicely okay so this is uh this is a ill-fated test right here because you'll see we're flying backwards and um which is not not a bad thing i don't mind this thing flying backwards but uh you'll see it's not turning to engage with its right side as it's supposed to and that's because the yaw is now set up incorrectly uh the idle uh, usage is, um, so pretty good. It still managed to dodge a whole lot of, uh, missiles, admittedly large missiles, so that's not too bad. It's a good sign, actually. Like, even a failed test, well, actually, it's the failed test that, like, you really learn a lot of stuff from. And it's, um, still managing to navigate, uh, but it's just not navigating quite the way it's supposed to. Alright. Alright. Fix it, passport-wise. I know you managed to do this. Did you just do it and I didn't even realize? We Helicopter. Actually, you know what I really like, um, beyond all reason? Um, I like gyrocopters, because, I don't know, there's just something endearing about them. It's just like, you're not a helicopter, you're not a plane. What are you? Actually, now I want to look up the... Because uh, that's something I also want to build more of. I have to build... Hang on. Make a note. Will, will future me even know what the hell I'm talking about? Gyrocopter. There we go. Uh, their, their use in real life is quite limited. Simply because, like, it's not... It doesn't have the lifting power uh, of a helicopter, and it doesn't have the speed or range of a plane, so it's kind of like, yeah, it's worst of both worlds. Except for, like, a few niche, like, essentially hobbyist things, I guess. Largest gyrocopter. Largest gyroplane. Alright, so, alright, so the Fairy Rotodyne, I've heard of that. Okay. Wow, Google is not, uh, yep. 
Yep, Fairy Rhododyne, that's the thing that seems to be popping up, because that was like... The whole damn point of that was like... Yeah... Hold on, so, Fairy Rhododyne. That's a fun thing, that's a sad story. Incidentally, if you have not uh, found the channel called Mustard, which talks about, like, engineering a uh, history of, like, planes and trains and stuff like that, um... You gotta, you gotta, you should, uh, you should treat yourself, because it's, um... It's a jolly good thing. Right, so, the Fairy Rhododyne, 1950s British compound gyroplane designed and built by Fairy a Aviation and intended for commercial and military uses. A development of the early, earlier Fairy Jet Gyrodyne, which had established a world helicopter speed record, the Rhododyne featured a tipjet powered rotor that burned a mixture of fuel and compressed air, bled from two wing mounted Napier Eland uh, turboprops. The rotor was driven for vertical takeoffs, landings, and hovering, as well as low-speed translational flight, but auto-rotated auto during uh, cruise flight with all engine power applied to propel it. So it's a very ingenious design. It's just, um, it's just one of those things that's like it ended up costing too much, delivering too little, couldn't uh, deliver on promises or anything like that. And yeah, so it failed. Much like uh, this yaw um, tail rotor is failing, uh... Oh yeah, I just tried to like set it up with ACBs and that didn't friggin work at all. So yeah, like I think for now I give up on that, uh, but if anyone knows what I did wrong there, because it worked absolutely fine for the main rotor, uh, but for the your, uh, the your rotor it just, it just didn't, so... That's a bit of an issue. It's a bit of an issue. I mean, I guess I could set it up like... And maybe a third ACB would do the trick, I don't know. Uh, what's happening now? Alright, we're on to the missile defense uh, portion of the video. Where I figure out what'll work well with this thing. Um, despite this thing being made pretty much entirely out of alloy, um, it is kind of big, and also those rotors, um, I think, have a massive radar signature, so they're not exactly stealthy. Um, so yeah, decoys aren't really going to do the trick, or so it feels like. And also, this thing dodges missiles pretty well, because it bounces up and down like a crazy person. Might even have room for a basic lambs on it. That would be pretty fun. That would be pretty cool. And it has a seawiz, which is very nice. Very, very nice. Also, I might be slightly too fond of uh, using rail launchers these days. Just a little bit. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, the trials and tribulations of trying to make a helicopter in from the depths. Sticky flare, and then we're gonna have... What are you gonna have? But da 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 Wait a minute. Did I heck up? Hold on, I'm actually gonna need to pay attention. Nope, I did not heck up. I did not heck up. Um... We're all good in the neighborhood. I guess I could have just made those a lot bigger. And then the thing goes pew pew pew. And... We... <laughs> uh, nothing quite like a forgetting to actually set up the ACB. Like, you can use those with seawids. I highly recommend uh, you use ACBs to fire decoys. And use SeaWiz to fire, like, missile interceptors, uh, just because that works better. SeaWiz aims those interceptors a lot better than ACBs do. And you don't want your flares to stop dropping because you've turned the weapons off, uh, which tends to turn SeaWiz off. Uh, so you can see there that uh, that missile swarm coming in uh, has not been fooled by the flares at all. It's still coming straight for us. Uh, the good news is, is that um, this helicopter can outrun them, so... Hooray for custom jets. <laughs> we and yep. Yeah, you might think that's a little bit broken, uh, a helicopter that can outrun missiles, but hey, it's not my fault that the missiles in From the Depths are damn slow. That is something that bugs me, and here's the thing, I, you've probably noticed by now, I'm not a big, I'm not hugely fussed by things in From the Depths being realistic. This is a video game, after all, and beyond a certain point, um, 
more realism doesn't add anything good uh, to a game, especially a game like this. This is complicated enough as it is. Imagine if it was like 100% realistic. Um, for a lot of people, it would be actually unplayable. Um, but yeah, one of the things that bugs me is just like missiles are very slow and they're like, they're not good at the things that real life missiles are good at. Like, I constantly begrudge the fact that, like, uh, missiles in front of the depths, there's no, um, how do you, like, what, let me articulate myself here better, I hope. It's like, they're not good at anti aircraft duty, they're not hit, hit, good at hitting small targets. Uh, small maneuverable targets, I should mean, like little planes and stuff like that. Uh, and part of the reason for that is that, that there's no proximity fuse on them anymore. It was always buggy back when there was one, because, by the way, there was one. Um, but yeah, like, they, they don't do the thing that real-life anti-aircraft missiles uh, do. I once knew a guy who uh, had been in the, of all things, uh, the, Sing uh, the Singapore Air Force, and because they have mandatory military service over there, um, and yeah, his uh, particular position uh, was uh, like manning anti-aircraft uh, positions, so like surface-to-air missiles, uh, SAM, and like, yay, screenshot! Anyway, so uh, like that whole thing with um, like the thing with those uh, anti-aircraft missiles, firstly they're big, they're like designed to like you know, they've got enough fuel and thrust to, like, catch up to a jet fighter and, like, rip it to pieces. And they do that because, uh, they're... The explosive radius of those things is around 60 meters, so they don't hit the target so much as get close enough uh, for the overpressure and shrapnel uh, to, like, blow holes straight through it. Because remember what you're shooting at. Aircraft are not tanks. Um, sufficient kablooey will absolutely make a huge mess of them. And I think this is where... Uh, I just go and uh, set up some SeaWiz instead because uh, that ACB is just not doing okay. So we're going to replace it here. And usually what I do is have I have a prefab for this. And this is the most basic kind of um, SeaWiz you can do. And that's really just prioritizing the stuff that's close. That usually does the trick. Like, honestly... You don't really need to do more than that unless you're wanting to do something specifically clever. There's a lot of options in there, uh, but this, but just when in doubt, shoot the projectile that's nearest you, and you'll probably do okay at least. Um, of course, that varies if you want to set up specific things to target crams or missiles or big missiles or small missiles and stuff like that. So plasma goes brrrr, and this is just to make sure. Also, there's flares on the missile interceptors, like purely just because I think that looks cool. Um, those flares and those radar decoys, like literally, do not do anything. Like they're way too small. Um, also, I like how this drops flares, um, just little mini flares, uh, just so they uh, zap some missiles. And the great thing about this is that it just slows missiles down further. And this is just me checking on how the Palisade is doing, and that plasma gun is actually doing pretty good work there. Not amazing work, but it is. And just taking out that missile swarm. Uh, I would like to point out as well, though, that, um, like, any decent railgun uh, will blow this thing out of the air in, like, very short order. So, yeah, that is, um... That is something that we're going to have to uh, address in uh, further videos, and uh, as we continue to build this thing. But yeah, I like how this is going, and I hope you like it too. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps, and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters. And do check out my second channel, Border RRR, link in the description. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.